Okay, in this video, what I'm going to do is show you a question from a Nibosh open book exam. Put it up on the screen now. It says, comment on the scientific research organization's approach to selecting contractors for the refurbishment work. And for what we're going to discuss, we don't actually need to go in depth through what the scenario was. Uh, what I'm going to do as well now is show you um, a some answer, some examples of answers that learners had sent in for marking, sort of like practice mock exams, if you will, in preparation for the exam for real. So they're needing to comment on the approach to selecting contractors, and this is what one of the points that they put doesn't appear to be any sign of controls to manage the contractor's movement throughout the site. That didn't score a point. Can you see why? And then another one, the permit, the permit to work issuer just signs off the permit in a rush rather than going to check if the site has the necessary precautions in place to begin with. There's, there's multiple reasons why these aren't scoring marks but uh, there's one that sort of stands out that I want to see if you can identify what the problem is. Here's another example. Doesn't appear anyone from the research company has assigned anyone to liaise or report to on the job as when the workers need clarification there's nobody to ask so they just carry on with the work. What's the problem with all of these? If you need to, pause the video, have a think about it, see if you can get, see if you can get, I'm driving at something here, I want you to see if you can get it. But basically, before we continue, if you're considering a move towards working in health and safety, it's absolutely essential that you're well prepared. That's why I want to take a quick second to let you know that you can study for the IOSH Managing Safely or the NIBOSH General Certificate, both national and international versions, online with us at Stockwell Safety. So if you're ready to take the first step towards a rewarding career in health and safety, see the links in the description to explore our industry-leading e-learning, IOSH and NIBOSH courses. They're not answering the question that has been asked. Let's go back and look at this question. The question is, comment on the scientific research organisation's approach to selecting contractors not managing contractors when they're on site it's to selecting contractors so basically everything then that sets the scene for everything because in the mark scheme that NIBOSH provide to examiners the whole mark scheme is going to be based on selecting contractors now when it comes to managing contractors on site, HSC have got a five-step approach to this. Um, just as a reminder, it's stage one is planning, number two is choosing a contractor, step three is contractors working on site, step four is monitoring the contract, step five is reviewing the work. So it's a five-step approach. This question is about step number two, choosing a contractor. Everything else is not really going to be relevant, even if what you're putting is technically correct. You know, some of the stuff that this learner has put you know, on its own kind of makes sense, but it's not relevant to the question. This is something that's really, obviously, really important because... The last thing I would want is for you to do a fantastic job of answering the wrong question because what a waste of time and effort and energy. So a few tips here to help you not fall in into this pitfall. And it, I think it happens to everybody, to be honest. I myself find myself doing it on a fairly regular basis as well. One tip is to actually highlight certain words 
or phrases within the question to remind you that that's the focal point of the question and not to miss it. Sometimes Nibosh will italicize, if that's the right word, uh, certain words within the question. So when they've done that, when you see that Nibosh have done that in the question, that should be a bit of a flag for you to sort of say, well, why have they italicized that particular word? It's because they, they're pushing you in that direction. They're kind of giving you a clue. But you can do it for yourself as well. For me, if I was uh, answering that question, I'd be underlining or highlighting the word um, selecting. So I'd be put, uh, so the question is comment on the scientific research organization's approach to selecting contractors. I'd want to say to myself, right, don't go off that, that narrow focus of selection of contractors because there might be a temptation as you start answering to talk about managing contractors on site and monitoring the contract. Um, so that's the first tip, highlight. The second tip is to reread the question multiple times as you're answering. How, however many times you need to, several times, not just once or twice, several times as you are answering the question, have it such that you can quickly just do a quick check back to the question to make sure that your answer is still on point. And then because you've highlighted certain things, uh, certain words within that question, every time you go back to do a reread, you're reminded again that this is about selection of contractors in this case. An acronym that's often used is RTQ, read the question, or RTFQ if you want a sort of a stronger version of, of it. Read the question. Nibosh aren't doing it deliberately, they're not trying to, to catch you out, but you can kind of almost catch yourself out if you don't take the time to read the question carefully because if you go on and even if your answer is perfect in terms of how to manage contractors on site you could do a fantastic job with that answer and still not gain very many points because the obviously you can see it now in front of you the the question is all about the selection of contractors for the refurbishment work and with this one it was worth 20 points so if you go off on the wrong tangent with this one, you're gonna pay dearly for it. So another quick tip to end on is when you're commenting on things, it's always good to think about positive and negative. So if you can identify and comment on 10 good things about the scientific research organization's approach to selection of contractors, you're on to a winner. And then if you can follow that up with 10 negative things about their approach to selection of contractors. I'm not saying that has always got to apply on a 50-50 ratio. It might be obvious that the, uh, the approach is particularly bad. You know, the, the, the scenario might have really painted a negative picture, in which case there might be a sort of more like 75% bad. So 15 uh, things to comment on that um, are bad about the approach and then five things that are positive. It really depends on the, on the scenario. But read the question multiple times, make highlights as necessary.